meeting in the church tonight. Instead, they'll be meeting here at, this, at the church at 3 o'clock. Uh, they're going to be going to the 345 showing of Jesus Revolution. And then going out, are you eating at Sephora? Is that the, and then they're eating at Sephora afterwards. Uh, they are inviting anyone with the, the, from the church who wants to go with them. They can either meet here at 3 o'clock or uh, be at the theater at 345. Uh, tickets for the showing are $5.50. So it's a matinee price. Uh, so uh, we hope uh, if you want to see that, if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, also, um, don't forget about prayer meeting. will be tomorrow morning at the church at 9. Uh, and Reverend Scott Gorley will be bringing the message. Uh, so that starts at noon and it's followed by a late luncheon. Uh, the fellowship team will meet next Sunday morning, March 19th. So if you were to a team, welcome. And your first meeting is next Sunday for the fellowship team. And for the board, welcome. And your first meeting is next Monday, the 20th. Uh, and the, the fellowship team meets in my office, and the board usually meets in the upstairs Sunday school room. Uh, also, next step, on April 5th at noon, uh, we'll need desserts for this event, as well as volunteers to help with the meal and with cleanup. Uh, so please see a fellowship team member um, for how you can help with that meal. Uh, next Sunday, Bob Schreckengoss will be here to share during the morning worship service. Uh, we'll be taking a special offering up for Bob and his ministry uh, at 9.30. That'll take the place of Sunday school that morning. So bring your kids out. Uh, that's Palm Sunday uh, for a great time of fellowship. and Maybe in the new building. So uh, we'll, uh, hopefully in the new building for that morning. And that'll give us lots of new places to hide eggs. Uh, so uh, we'll hope to see you that morning. Uh, also, thank you to everyone that uh, helped with the auction last evening that uh, helped opening for the new building. We we had every table we had that was filled. It was a nice night. So thank you, everyone, uh, for all the help uh, for that last night. Does anybody else have any other announcements this morning? Yes, Debbie. Okay, at Okay, it's six o'clock. So board that means you're back to seven. So you got kicked down. You got kicked back. So uh, fellowship team meeting meeting is on Monday at six o'clock and the board meeting is at seven. Okay. The, the hard work and effort that was put in and Lord that you just blessed us with the with so much and, and Father we thank you for, for the new building and the school and all the things that you were doing here at Leatherwood and Father God we just want to take some time to ready ourselves to worship you and so Father would you prepare us for that in Jesus name we pray these things Amen you want to stand and greet someone around you this morning let them know you're glad they're, you're glad they're here
this time we'd like to ask the ushers to come forward for the morning times and offerings.
coming to our time of praises this morning. What's God been doing good? Anybody else? Heather, yes. Last night was just amazing. Just blown away by the attendance and the support and the love and all the good um, things that were spoken. I think for our first benefit, it was amazing. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who helped set up, clean up, pay, whatever you did. Um, I just appreciate all of that. Amen. Anybody else? Yes. I'm so thankful for joining in brothers and sisters in Christ and fellowship with the folks here. Anybody else have a praise? Yes, ma'am. Also, uh, remember uh, Kane Kennebooth, he lost his working truck to a fire this uh, week. And uh, so um, remember Kate and, and the family there. awaiting result and for Pat Brown who's in the hospital. Yes.
Brady Jr. He's in a car accident. Anyone else? Anybody with an unspoken request can just lift up a hand as we uh, prepare to go before the Lord with you. Also, just uh, uh, we uh, just think of Cade Kenemuth as he lost his work truck this week uh, to a fire. And, uh, Lord, we just pray for him and the whole family, Lord, that you would uh, just be real near to him at this time and, and give him a way out from this, Lord. Uh, we uh, also just uh, want to she is uh, struggling uh, right now with this loss. And, um, and also, um, um, Lord, we just uh, pray your peace in this situation. For Jan and Sister Karen, who's having back pain, and but we pray for guidance and direction for her as a, uh, they're trying to, to find a way out from under this and what direction to turn. And uh, Lord, we also just think of Donovan as he's uh, going through a difficult transition time, and his dad moving away. Father God, we just pray your healing touch upon her. Lord, as you would even now begin to, to relieve some of this pain and strengthen her. And uh, Lord, for Tina's friend from work who's uh, getting ready for surgery and, uh, and is just uh, nervous uh, about going through this procedure. And Lord, we just lift him up to you. And, and for Ralph that's awaiting results, Lord, we, we just pray that uh, you would be with him as he waits. And, and, and Father God, and uh, that you'd um, bring back good results for him. And also we pray who's in the hospital. and. Uh, needing a touch from you and for um, Kim's family as they lost Lindsay last week and, and Father they're dealing with the, with the, this the loss again uh, in this family and so Lord we lift them up to you and, uh, and for Shauna's daughter's baby that's in, in breach and, they're, and, and, uh, and to bring about healing and Lord we come to you with all of these unspoken requests and, and Lord with this request that you would come and meet us here as we open your word today and it's in Jesus name we pray Amen. All right, at this time, Children's Church for Children's Church. Seven. 
section because we don't <laughs> stick out so much when we sit with the student section when we get loud and rowdy. So uh, in, uh, at the game before, we had sat beside the student section. Um, and so uh, this game, we sat kind of right behind the student section, which was great. We had pretty good seats. The students decided to stand up for like three quarters of the entire game. So we were sitting there in our seats watching the game and all of a sudden the ball would come to our end and all the students would stand up and we're like, we can't see it. It was a great game. They won. But man, I didn't see hardly any of it because it was the, the kids just in front of us. They, they were excited to be there and they stood almost the entire time. You know, it's no fun... Having a curtain of students pulled up in front of you when the ball comes to your side of the gym. It's also no fun having a curtain pulled up between you and God. And that's exactly what happened to us when, when Adam and Eve sinned. You see, they, they walked in the garden. They enjoyed the presence of the Lord. They talked with each other. They're without sin. There was nothing in the way. But from that's why there was this, this, this veil in the temple. Because in the temple, there was the Holy of Holies. And that was where God's presence was said to, to come down from heaven and resided in the Holy of Holies. But outside the Holy of Holies was this they called it the veil, the curtain, the, 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 and it was not just any piece of fabric. I hope you, you got the enormity of that from the video. Here's how it's described according to Jewish tradition. It says, the veil before the most holy place was 40 cubits, which would be 60 feet. So 60 feet, that's a, how wide do you think this building is? the end of the fingers, about four inches of fabric. It, it, this was more like a wall than a curtain. And so it was wrought in 72 squares, and when joined together, this, the veil was so heavy that it needed 300 priests to manipulate it so that the high priest could enter in behind it when he went to the quite a piece of fabric, right? It's a quite an impressive structure. And it, this is what was standing between us and God until Jesus. How Paul describes what happens to us because this temple is this temple veil is no longer in our way. It's torn in two. So we're going to turn to Hebrews chapter 10 and we're going to read verses 19 through 20. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. It says this. It says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. You see, as we continue on in this series called The Body, I want to take a look at how Christ... Lord, may he feed us, may he give us what we need to know, may he strengthen our hearts and our minds and soul, and draw us closer to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, if you could hold the picture till I tell you, okay? He's got a picture coming up here. But a few years ago, at Winter Jam, I got to meet one of my favorite artists, uh, David Crowder. And uh, were you with me there, or was it, it was one of the other... And, and we were we were trying to find this uh, adult leaders meeting, and we were lost in the belly of the new PPG Paints Arena, trying to find this room that we were supposed to go to. So we stopped and asked for directions from this this worker, and he's like, "What are you?" And there's David Crowder on the elevator. I was like, 
that's awesome. And so I walk in the elevator and I said, where are you going? He goes, three. And I said, that's where I'm going too. And so we hit the three on the elevator and we started to ride up the elevator and we were having all kinds of good conversation. And I said to him, I said, do you mind if I get a picture? And at that moment, two security guards stepped in between us and David Crowder. No picture, sir. I was like, oh. but they didn't know who I was. I could have been anybody. So they were they were, they were stage passes to the Crowder concert by a friend, and this allowed us to walk backstage at any time and hang out with anyone who happens to be there. So we take the boy boys back, and the first person we run into is David Crowder. It's not that. Taking pictures with people, that's him and the boys, but because we had our backstage passes on, we were vetted. We were free to go. We had free access. So, with that little thing, with that little pass, we were able. What Jesus did on the cross was like our backstage pass. He gave it to us, and we're not getting to go into the David Crowder, we're going into the presence through Jesus Christ of the Heavenly Father. Father God now looks at Jesus Christ and the, and the penalty that He paid and the price that He paid and as members of His body He says, come please, by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way open to us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart. Brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. So because of the price that Jesus paid, the curtain was torn and we now have the ability to draw near is gone. It's ripped apart. That means when I want to go, I can go and draw near to God. There's nothing standing in the way. And the only scripture here is that we have to be washed to end. We have to be washed to enter. My heart has to be sprinkled clean and my body has to be washed of all sin before I can ever think any high priest that needed to enter must first do one thing. Outside of the curtain was, some people call it a labor, some people call it, I've heard, wash basin. It, there, there was a cleaning sink to wash himself cleanse himself before entering into the presence of God. And so if we're going to get close to God, we have to cleanse ourselves in two ways. We're told in this scripture that first on your idols, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove, remove from you your heart of stone and give you your heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So the first cleansing comes as we're born again and we confess our sin. God forgives us from those things because we can't enter before God if we're not born again. If we don't have the new heart that is the key to enter. So we need to take the living water from the labor and make sure we have sprinkled it on our hearts to go before God. In 1 9 it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So we confess them. We wash them off with the, with the, the, the ritual of baptism. And we, that makes us clean to enter into His presence. God did the heaven anytime we want. Draw near anytime. The curtain was torn for us to draw near. Also, the curtain was torn for us to have an unswerving hope. 
The curtain was torn for us to have an unswerving hope. It, have you ever been to, to one of those, uh, they, I forget what they were called, but the power team, that's what it was, the phone books, and it was like this thick. And, and he's like, I'm going to rip this thing apart with my bare hands. And I'm like, I'd like to see that. That ain't happening. And then he'd take that thing and just go. <clears throat> and you're like, wow. That was a phone book. The temple curtain without putting a hand on it. Without laying a hand on it. Think of all that happened in that moment. Jesus defeated death, sin, hell, and the grave. Jesus became the sacrifice for all that off the wall. Tore in two. Because of this, hope in Jesus. Verse 23 says this, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. So every time we think about the curtain, he has the power. We have an unshakable future with God. And listen to what we're promised in Romans 8, 22 through 25. It says this, We know that in the whole, the whole of creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoptions to sonship, the redemption for our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they have already had? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. We have this hope. And we have it because Jesus' body was torn for us. The temple was torn in two, and that's what creation was waiting for. And now we have the ability to become sons and daughters of Is our hope. Because of Jesus, what Jesus has already pulled off. Because he tore this curtain in two. We're cheapening his grace. What took 300 priests to move was torn in two by one act of Jesus. That should give us hope. We need to hold on to that. Thirdly, the curtain was torn in two for us to spur on one another. For us to spur on one another. You know, as we've been uncovering things about the body of Christ, we've been looking at the fact that we all belong to each other. Right? We belong to each other. I see a couple heads shaking, maybe. We belong to each other, and that we're to, to be doing good works for each other and, and, and have spiritual gifts, not just for ourselves, but for the good of the body. This is not just for our benefit, but it's for the benefit of others as well. And verse 24, he says this, Consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. So, as we draw near to God... As we draw near to God and as we have this hope within us from the curtain being torn, we also have to remember, it says, don't stop because you're tired. Keep going because you're almost there. We're told that the days are shorter and shorter. And so we are maybe tired, but we need to give this message out to everyone else who is tired as well. Keep going. Keep it up. You're doing a great job. Encouraging one another across the finish line. Because there's coming a, a place where there's no more pain and no more tears and no more achy bodies and no more uh, um, sleepless nights. That None of that thing, those things are going to happen because of what Jesus Christ did for us. And they did pretty well. Got 11 out of 12, right? Spurred them on to great things. 
The world is going to try to make you give up on this. But we don't each other. We're the unified body of Christ, and we're in this together. So find someone, pick someone each week, and say, I'm going to spur this person on. I'm going to encourage this person and remind them of the hope that is before all of us. The curtain was torn for us to spur on Mary to get to him. Our sin is what made that necessary. God had wanted an intimate relationship with us, and the church is what he has set up for that to happen in our day. We can gather together with the body where it is called church, and here's what Paul said about it in, in, in our scripture. He says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together. Not giving up meeting together. Not Jesus' body was broken. The veil was torn. To give us the ability to worship together as a church. His body was torn. So that we could come together. On Sunday. On Wednesday. Oh, let's get crazy. Like Thursday. Like a Monday morning. It's when we make excuses for not being able to attend. Or we don't make it a priority to be here. Or we tear down those who are here. Because this is serious business to him. This is the body of Christ. And he died so we can meet together. Period. That's his plan to save the world. You might disagree with his plan, but that's his. And he hasn't made a mistake. But we need to realize the church is your family. The church is of vital importance. We need to be here, and we need to be here according to the scripture, all the more as we see the day of his return approaching. So go on, go home, if it's coming closer to the end. We have the promise that he will meet us here, that he will bless us here, he will encourage us here, and that we'll find hope in the body. So let's make it a priority to meet together. Because Jesus died to give us this benefit. This is the good news. The curtain is torn. The veil has been ripped away. The wall has gone. We all can see God clearly. As the, the worship team comes in and leads us in a final song. Lord, the, the song says it perfectly. You did pay it all. Lord, where we could not atone for our sins, you sent your son Jesus in our place. And Lord, the, the Lord, help us to encourage and spur one another on. Lord, help us to not give up meeting together. Because, Lord, these are the things you died for. And these are the blessings of being a Christian. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing as we get ready to close.